Imagine having everything you ever dreamed. Don't you want it? Can't you see it? Imagine first audition after college, I get the lead. Apart from me, well, of course, I gotta believe it. Excuse you. You and I, all the fame, sharp, ping, and what's his name? Sound exciting? Inviting. Let's do it then. Pucky. Personal stylist, agent, and a publicist. But where do I fit into this? Good job. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about High School Musical 3 Senior Year. High School Musical 3 Senior Year is a 2008 theatrical release about Troy and team trying to figure out what they're going to do with their futures as soon as senior year is over. It's directed by Kenny Ortega, cinematography by Daniel Aranjo, editing by Don Brochu music by David Lawrence, and it's written by Peter Barsaccini. The film stars Zac Efron as Troy, Vanessa Hudgens as Gabriella, Ashley Tisdale as Sharpay, Lucas Grabiel as Ryan, Corbin Blue as Chad, and Monique Coleman as Taylor. Filming began immediately after number two's success. They were given a $2 million tax break from Utah. Um, they, fil they started filming in May 2008. Uh, they were given enough marketing and um, budget to do a theatrical release. It was released under Walt Disney Pictures and Disney Channel labels at the same time, which is the, I think the first time that ever happened. It was released theatrically in the US. Um, there were rumors that Zac Efron was like holding out on the third one for $5 million because he had started having success outside of Disney Channel, um, but that was never confirmed. It did have an $11 million budget and made $252.9 million in the box office. Are you ready for this? It has a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is better than I thought it was gonna have. And it says, it won't win any converts, but High School Musical 3 is bright, energetic, and well-crafted. That's high praise. <laughs> if you were alive in 2008 and like up in this kind of stuff, you will remember when Vanessa Hudgens' nudes were leaked and she was very, her privacy was very much violated. Um, but instead of it being the Me Too movement, when things like that were happening and everyone surrounded the victim and said, I can't believe someone would violate their privacy like this, it's really messed up. Um, it was a different time in 2008. So everybody and their parents reamed Vanessa Hudgens. How could she? She's an adult woman. <laughs> How could she possibly have taken naked photos of herself to share with her boyfriend who she probably doesn't see all the time? So um, it was a different time. Vanessa Hudgens was at the receiving end of what I can only imagine is some of the worst bullying imaginable. And I need to read this to you. This is how different of a time. It's 2008 to now when, you know, in recent years when nudes have gotten leaked and everyone is like, yo, who would do this to this person? That's so messed up. Don't leak their photos. That is their private, personal stuff to do. Like, who cares? Leave it alone. But because she was a Disney star and it was a different time, it was a whole thing. Listen to this. There was this whole thing that she wasn't gonna be in High School Musical 3 because of this scandal, right? Okay? Listen to what Disney said when they said she was gonna be in the movie. They said, Vanessa has apologized for what was obviously a lapse in judgment. We hope she's learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, what? <laughs> um, that's really messed up. This is followed by Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure, which is a direct video release and the only High School Musical thing I haven't seen, I'm pretty sure. And then there was rumored to be a fourth one coming out in 2016, but then we got the show, High School Musical, the musical, the series. I have watched the first season. I really, like now that it's coming to an end, I'm excited because then I'll be able to binge two through four. Um, but the first season was actually excellent. Like people might scoff at it. And I went in to watching that thinking it was going to be bad and I was going to make fun of it. And then it was really good. <laughs> so I'm excited to watch two through four. Mariah's ahead of me. She's excited. She's already started the fourth season. So uh, a good time. Okay, I'm excited. I'm sure you can guess because this had a higher budget and a theatrical release, it's much more cinematic. This film is infinitely more cinematic than the first two. The first two are high quality for Disney Channel original movies. The movement, the like, 
quality, the lighting, all of it is very cinematic for Disney Channel original movies, but this is cinematic. This is stunning to look at. The movement's insane. The amount of coverage they have is top tier. Like everything visually speaking about this is infinitely better than the first two. It's just so gorgeous. Not to mention, I have to say this because the hallway, okay, Scream, right? Scream, the song that it's his, it's the third movie's bet on it, right? You got Get Your Head in the Game, you got Bet on it, then you got Scream, right? It's just Troy's song. He's in the high school by himself moving around. There's a scene where the hallway is turning and he does like the walls, right? Okay. <laughs> I had someone watching with me and they said, was this before Inception came up? And it was. So High School Musical 3 did it first. <laughs> um, but like visually, what a beautiful representation, just the whole thing. Um, every song has such a different like look and it's so perfect like the production quality of i want it all alone <laughs> like sets this movie above the first two so insane i think this might be the first one that has music but so okay so high school musical 2 when sharpay and ryan are driving into the country club lucas Graybeals, you got it <laughs> plays on the radio and that's the only song i'm pretty sure in that movie that isn't a high school musical song right this one has two you got Like Woe by Ellen AJ. I didn't realize how many movies that song was in, but I'm living for it because Like Woe by Ellen AJ is a bop. And then you have Freaky by Jesse McCartney, which I had no idea was in this movie, which also made me kind of like, wait a second, Freaky was out? Cause I'm like, I, I thought Right Where You Want Me was still happening in this time, but I guess, um, Departure, Departure? Is Departure the one with Levin? Whatever, the album had Levin and Freaky on it um, was out. So that's, cr and they're in the same scene as the party at his house um, after the big game. And love that. And then the fabulous instrumentation that cracked me up in the second one so much returns in this one during Sharpay's reveal. And it's so iconic, like I can't even deal with it. And then that also made me realize that when they are in the high school, Sharpay starts every cafeteria song. Like any song that takes majority place in the cafeteria, Sharpay starts with the whole like, status quo song and then obviously the second movie they're not in the school so um but in this one she starts i want it all and so i think that's really funny um i do think this movie is the most music heavy i think it has the most songs i mean it's a two-hour movie i think it has the most songs and i feel like every song in this movie is really good and really catchy um I really, I'm always torn between this one and the second one. I feel like every single song in the second one is a bop. And may, nah, I don't know if that's necessarily true though. I just feel like this one and the second one are like maybe tied for music for me because the music is so good in this one. And the ones that are so good are like, so, you know, like bet on it is <laughs> peak. And then fabulous and I want it all. So good, like I can't deal with it. They're just, uh, it's just so good, it's good. This has a very like serious opening and kind of serious tone it carries throughout the film. I saw this in theaters in 2008 with my dad and Mariah. <laughs> and we came out of that movie and my dad loved I Want It All. He made it his ringtone. Like that's the story I love to tell about this movie. Um, but in 2008, by the time this came out, I was already a freshman in high school. Um, so, or I was going to be freshman high school. I don't remember when it came out. Probably later. If they filmed in May, it probably came out later in 2008. So I was probably a freshman in high school. So I obviously had an experience like senior year of high school coming to an end with a huge chunk of your life. And so I don't think some of the stuff resonated with me as deeply. Like I was resonating with the fact that um, it was coming to an end because I was like, you know, we've had three high school musical movies. Like, it's kind of crazy to me that it's coming to an end. Like, it's an end of an era. Um, I was entering high school, so it was the end of like a certain kind of era for me, but not in the same way. So now being able, I haven't seen this in a minute, especially all the way through. So now to be able to sit with it as an adult who's about to, well, by the time you're seeing this, actually by the time you're seeing this, Oh, it's imminent. By the time you're seeing this, I am literally about to turn 30. So that's crazy. Um, 
I truly, now that I've lived through high school graduation, college graduation, I totally understand the serious note that they were going for in this movie. And I think they really did a great job capturing it. Um, I feel like the first two obviously are really more about Troy trying to fit in and find the balance between the things he likes, which this one definitely carries. The first one is obviously like fit in when trying to break this whole like, he's not just a jock, he might actually really like to sing and dance, like this whole like breaking the status quo thing, etc. The second one, he's trying to find a balance of balancing his friends, but also thoughts of the future. And then this one, the thoughts of the future and worry about the choice he's going to make and the, the, the pressure he feels from outside forces is really evident. And I think it is such a real story to tell um, from Troy's perspective, because who doesn't, when they're graduating high school, feel pressure from everyone around them about what they should do with their life, what decision they should make for college, if they should go to college, the friends they're going to miss if they like, you know, break apart. Like he's trying to choose between, does he want to do basketball or theater? And then he's also trying to choose between, do I want to go to U of A with Chad? Like we've always planned, or do I want to go to a school that's going to be close to Gabriella, love of my life? Like he's dealing with so much choice while also coming to a very like big life moment. Like graduating high school is like such a symbolic end of childhood, even though like 100% it is not the end of childhood. I feel like I still sometimes feel like a child. So like adulthood's a joke. Um, but in a symbolic way, it is like the end of childhood, right? Like that's how society really stresses it. Like you are going to college, you're an adult now. Like say goodbye to the comfort you've known for the last 18 years, basically, right? And I feel like while you have this whole musical aspect going on, you got really funny bits happening, you've got very beautiful like love story stuff happening, you've got, you know, all these different things happening. At the core, Troy is dealing with becoming an adult and making a really difficult decision that he has to make for himself and learn that no one else can make it for him and he should not be swayed by other people's opinions and do what he wants to do. And you can really see that struggle in him. I think, again, I'll, I've said it every time, but I don't think this series would be what it is without Zach Efron being Troy Bolton. I think he has such a masterful way of being silly and fun and charismatic, but carrying that stress and anxiety that Troy holds that people might not realize is tr like him truly like being anxious or having anxiety. He plays it off so well. It's just, I think it's masterfully done. I know it's stupid. It, I, you might think I'm stupid for like dissecting High School Musical 3 like this, but truly, Story-wise, it's much more deep and serious than I realized when I saw it back in 2008, right? Because I'm like 14 and now I'm gonna be 30. And I'm like, dang, this is handling like a very right, I think it's, and it's also, I think just such a perfect way to end the series, like to end the trilogy, because it was the end of like, you know, High School Musical at the same time that all of these stars were like adults already, but like, then blossoming out to go do other things. You know, you got Zach, he was doing Hairspray, he's doing this, that, and the other. He's becoming a, a 17 again. He's doing these huge movies going on to be a very big mega star. You got Vanessa who went off to do a bunch of indie work and then circle back around and she's done like tick, tick, boom, and like all this amazing work. And then you have, you know, Ashley and Lucas who go off and do their stuff. You got Corbin who also is now like a huge Broadway star. Um, I know Monique, 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 I thought that was a great name. She is like ice skating. Like they all went on and grew up and did a bunch of stuff. It's just like so poetic. It's just, it's so good. And then on top of that, this one, because I feel like they kind of struggled with, they didn't want to make Sharpay the villain, right? Cause in the first one, she's kind of the villain, right? We've talked about this. The first one, she's not as villainous. You know, she's a little bit of a brat. She didn't have to be that mean about all of it, but like you can kind of understand where she's coming from. The second one, Sharpay's behavior is inexcusable. She is a true villain in the second one. We talked about that, we touched on that. 
but at the end of that one, she supposedly learned her lesson, right? So in this one, I feel like they struggled with what to do with Sharpay because I feel like she's in this one less than Troy and Gabriella and even Chad. And even Ryan, I feel like she's in it a little bit less than Ryan. Um, I feel like they struggled with what to do with her because she is like the villain full of herself person. So like she was in this weird between where she's like kind of friends with all of them, but still kind of selfish and a master manipulator. Like the way she kind of does the same thing about with Gabriella and the science geek thing, trying to get her out of the musical. She does the same thing with the freshman year like program at Stanford or whatever to manipulate Troy into doing exactly what Troy would do because Troy is such an amazing human being <laughs> and encourage Gabriella to go because it's an amazing opportunity and she should go. So she's still kind of master manipulator, but they toned it down a lot. So I feel like they didn't kind of know what to do with her, but she's still, you know, she's still fabulous. <laughs> um, but this is like, this is a lot deeper than I remember. And I feel like it's like not a lot deeper than the first two because I truly think the first two tackle things that people really can resonate with. But I feel like I just resonated so much more deeply with this storyline in Troy, period, because of I've now lived through it. I know what it's like to make those choices, make that life transition, and it is scary and no small feat. And so I think it's just really, really well done. Sorry, I really don't. Oh, damn. I feel like everyone's reactions in this were like peak. Like they went to like some kind of acting school or they all became adults and had a lot more experience in acting or something because I feel like Zach's reactions have always been really good. Like if you're watching him in the background or you see him like react to something someone is saying, he's always been really good at that. But in this one, I feel like Ashley stepped up her reaction game. One scene in specific, particular, when they were all on the stage talking about, you know, what the musical is going to be or whatever, Sharpay, every shot she was in was hilarious. Every reaction she had was priceless. I was dying. I thought Ashley did a fantastic job at her reactions to things in this movie. So she really stepped it up. I feel like everyone kind of stepped up their acting game in this one. I just think Kenny, maybe by knowing them for this long at this point, was able to foster such or or push them farther because they're adults now they've had a little bit more experience i don't know but it was really really a different level of acting in this one i think the choreography in this i feel like is on another level the first two obviously a very good choreo everyone does the we're all in this together dance all the time but this one like different level like they had more time to practice kenny went all the frick frack out it was just like the waltzing the boys are back sequence just so much good dancing in this like it was excellent excellent choreography favorite part scream <laughs> i love that part so much i think it's just ooh, it's yes um for a lot of reasons first of all zach looks beautiful second of all it's cinematically stunning third of all it's a great song fourth of all i feel like it really is just like choice songs are always so like yes um my least favorite part is probably when the juilliard people did a slow stand clap it was so cringe <laughs> like that's the cringiest part of this movie probably um recommend of course watch again absolutely i love this movie specific moments um the inception hallway done before inception amazing the waltzing um the high production quality like all of it other things i have to say is tiara i think that's her name a necessary character is rocket man i don't know you know i don't know if they were necessary to the story i get what they were going for i get you know adding the characters for more like you know story and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it is a two hour movie compared like the first two or like an hour and some change. This is two hours. It's a long movie. Um, but I just don't know if they were necessary characters. Um, and then one, like they do it at the beginning right away. Troy gives the last shot of this championship game to like a freshman or something. Right. And I feel like they do such a good job of 
displaying the type of person Troy Bolton is. He's so amazing and wonderful and I'm obsessed. <laughs> That's probably why so many people were obsessed with Zac Efron. Obviously he was very beautiful, but, and is very beautiful. Not was, is very beautiful still. Seems like a very genuine, beautiful human being as well. Um, but I feel like Troy was what a lot of people wanted to be, right? Sensitive, nice, caring, while also being cool and popular and funny and blah and good looking and blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? It's just so good. That's everything I have for High School Musical 3, if you can freaking believe it. Sorry that was so long, but I just really like this movie and it's coming to it like it's the end, right? Like we have Sharpay's Fabulous Adventures at some point, but still it's the end. Um, so my final rating is eight. I feel like I have to do basketballs, like just to end it, you know? Even if I probably have done basketballs before, I feel like I gotta do basketballs. It's the end of an era. So I'm gonna do eight basketballs out of 10. Uh, total movie count is. Parents at total and cry count are still the same. Although I did feel close to crying. I think maybe if I had been watching alone, I would have cried. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, and then if you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, uh, follow me on all socials. Uh, uh, you know, just number 19 everywhere. Join Patreon. Patreon is great. Got a tier starting at just $1. You get um, every video a week early, coupon code for merch, access to exclusive merch. And uh, yeah, buy merch. Merch is great. Merch is grand. Until next time. Comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not in charge of real life. You are, so do you. And don't be probably Tiara about it. She's the one that's, like, actually not great in this movie. I don't know where to go. What's the right? I want my own thing. So bad I'm gonna scream. Oh, no. Not Little Mermaid 3.